here on the famous tour. Now I'm here in Glastonbury, I'm reading the uh, the, cover, the Nick's letter. It's a um, a letter of amplification to the Baron's petition, and then after that we've got the Queen's reply, which I could do somewhere else. So hello again. I'm from Common Law Ascent or Practical Lawful Descent. Um, We've got a Facebook page and a Patreon account with lots of media and files, like a library of reading that you can do. Um, so I'm going to read. I'm, I'm doing these readings just to, in case people find it difficult to read. So here's the letter to the Queen's private secretary, uh, Sir Robin Janvrin, C K C V O, C B Principal, private secretary to. Her Majesty the Queen. Uh, I think the Magna Carta Society created all of this. And it was in 2001. So Buckingham Palace, London, 23rd of March, 2001. You were kind enough to invite a letter of amplification to accompany our petition to Her Majesty. Thank you. The Treaty of Nice, which is Lisbon Treaty now, uh, raises issues of major constitutional importance. It directly threatens our rights and freedoms and undermines oaths of loyalty to the Crown. Such fundamental matters cannot be considered merely the stuff of day-to-day -day politics. They directly concern the Crown, the Constitution and every British subject, including generations yet unborn. We find ourselves living in exceptional times which call for exceptional measures, hence our petition to Her Majesty, which exercises rights unused for over 300 years. Clause 61 of the Magna Carta, which were reinforced by Article 5 of the Bill of Rights. So no, it wasn't repealed in case anyone's wondering, because it was actually used 300 years ago, so it wasn't repealed directly after it was uh, created in 1215. That's a wrap, is it? No, but I was thinking, should I interrupt my the letter to say those things? Yeah, that's fine. Cool. Uh, we find ourselves living in exceptional times, which call for exceptional measures, I've just said that. Hence our petition to Her Majesty, which exercises rights unused for over 300 years, Clause 61 of the Magna Carta, which were reinforced by Article 5 of the Bill of Rights. As you know, the wording of Clause 61 says, and laying the transgression before us, petition to have that transgression redressed without delay and we shall procure nothing from anyone directly or indirectly whereby any of these concessions and liberties might be revoked or diminished and if any such things have been has been procured let it be vo void and null so uh, I think that means that uh, any laws being made uh, by a criminal sort of ultra-virus uh, since uh, the implication of Article 61 are uh, null and void because... What do we mean by because, ultra uh, they are... Um, whereby any part of these concessions and liberties might be revoked or diminished. So anything that's taking away your rights are null and void. The common law. Uh, they uh, don't... I've got a question. What's that? What's ultra-virus? Is it like... Uh, a... Beyond their station, beyond uh. their powers. Overreaching their station. Uh, they're definitely, uh, there's an overreaching going on, uh, no lawful authority to make or pass laws because uh, because uh, they're break they've been breaking laws for a while now. So uh, this, this is beginning, the petition to end all petitions almost really, um, in 2001 there where they invoked Article 61 which makes constitutional law, it's the highest law in the land and everyone should be standing under it really. And um, they cannot take your liberties away lawfully. So anything they're trying to do or anyone's trying to do to remove your liberties is uh, void and null. We have petitioned Her Majesty to withhold the royal assent from any bill seeking to ratify the Treaty of Nice because there is clear evidence, which shall, we shall address in a moment, that it is in direct conflict with the Constitution of the United Kingdom. It conflicts with the Magna Carta and the Declaration and Bill of Rights, and above all, with Her Majesty's coronation oath and the oaths of office of Her Majesty's ministers, every one of these protections stands to this day, which is why they are now being invoked by our position, petition, position, my position. Um, ultimately, 
our supreme protection is Her Majesty's obligations under the coronation oath. The Queen has solemnly promised to govern the people of the United Kingdom according to the statutes in Parliament agreed on and according to their laws and customs. Her Majesty also swore to preserve all rights and privileges as by law do or shall appertain to any of them. I think there might be a typo there. From, from the spiritual point of view, it is unimaginable that Her Majesty would seek, in effect, a divorce from her duty. From a secular point of view, the coronation oath is a signed contract. Recent statements by ministers and by the previous Prime Minister confirm that they would not advise any measure that might breach, tend to breach the coronation oath, nor betray Her Majesty's promise to her loyal subjects. Her Majesty accepts the advice of her ministers. Conversely, it is their duty to advise in accordance with the coronation oath. They cannot lawfully advise a breach, nor can they gain or remain in power without swearing allegiance to the Crown. Yet the Treaty of Nice represents precisely such a breach, and it has now been signed by the Foreign Secretary using the Royal Prerogative. Prerogative. Blackstone's Commentaries, Volume 1, page 239, says of the Royal Prerogative, the splendour rights and powers of the Crown were attached to it for the benefit of the people. They form part of, and are generally speaking, as ancient as the law itself. De prerogativa regis is merely declaratory of the common law. The duties arising from the relation of, the, of sovereign and subject are reciprocal. Protection that is, the security and governance of his dominions according to the law, is the duty of the sovereign. An allegiance and, and subjection, with reference to the same criterion, the constitution and laws of the country form, in return, the duty of the governed. So, we have already observed that the prerogatives are vested in him for the benefit of his subjects, and that his majesty is under and not above the laws. For such words to have meaning, the act of the signing of the Treaty of Nice, Lisbon, by the Foreign Secretary demonstrates that ministers have de facto renounced their oaths of allegiance. So now that's why we know they're acting ultra-virus, because they've renounced their oaths by breaking contract. So we don't have a contract to them. Um, <clears throat> I hope you don't mind me interjecting with my opinions. Prefer to keep it just based on fact, but you know you can always cross-reference things and, and read this yourself on our pages, which I'll link you to at the bottom. Indeed, faced in due course with a bill seeking ratification of the Treaty of Nice, the only options appear to be for Her Majesty to dissolve Parliament or for the government to resign and fight an election on the issue. The ex-government would then be faced with seeking elective power to introduce new oaths of loyalty under a new constitution as part of their new manifesto. This would distill the issues as perhaps nothing else might, since it would allow the people of the United Kingdom to decide whether or not they wish the constitution to be breached in this way, their rights and freedoms to be curtailed, and the position, powers and responsibilities of their sovereign to be diminished. Of course, for the many thousands of subjects who have supported our petition, no such option exists. As the Act of Supremacy and the Bill of Rights puts it, all usurped in foreign power and authority may forever be clearly extinguished and never used or obeyed in this realm. No foreign prince, per person, prelate, state or potentiate or potentate or potentiate i don't know if this time this shall be at any time after the last day of this session of parliament use enjoy or exercise any manner of power jurisdiction superiority authority preeminence or privilege within this realm but that henceforth the same shall be clearly abolished out of this realm forever so it is clear that no one neither sovereign nor parliament nor government nor people may tamper with dismantle destroy or surrender our constitution we are all tenants of it and trustees we inherited these rights and we have a supreme responsibility to pass them in good future in good order to future generations they are not ours to discard or diminish which is why oaths of allegiance place an essential limitation on Parliament's power and the Queen's coronation oath is crucial. The coronation oath is a moral obligation, a religious obligation, a sworn obligation, a contractual 
obligation, a statutory obligation, a common law obligation, a customary obligation, an obligation on all who swear allegiance. It is the duty of, the gov of government and it is sworn for the nation, the Commonwealth and all dominions. So that's the whole of the Commonwealth, including Australia, Canada and all the Commonwealth countries. The coronation oath is the peak of a pyramid and all subordinate oaths are bound by its limitations. The armed services swear allegiance to the sovereign, not to the government of the day. This helps clarify the principle that allegiance is necessary and not optional, an essential part of the checks and balances of our constitution. Without these oaths and their lawful enforcement, we have little to protect us from government by tyranny. We return now to our reasons for stating that the Treaty of Nice is unconstitutional. Our petition highlights several such clauses. We draw particular attention to Article 191, which seeks to restrict the political freedom of Her Majesty's subjects. The EU seeks to assume the right to lay down regulations governing political parties at European level and withdraw or prevent the funding of political parties which do not contribute to forming a European awareness. This is a clear restriction of free speech and free political association. It also introduces two particularly abhorrent propositions, taxation without representation and the use of state sanctions to suppress public opinion. Our political freedom is absolute. The Bill of Rights says so. It cannot be limited in any way. Her Majesty is rightfully inscribed on our coins of the realm as fit, fit Fid death and lib death, libera, libertatis, libertatis. <laughs> uh, I haven't read this out loud before. Libertatis defensor, defender of the freedom of the people. So, guys, the constitution protects your rights as, as, as sovereign people. Under the, you know, this is what our laws are for. They're for, for protection of your rights, <laughs> not the other way round. It has been suggested to us that a referendum or plebiscite might be an acceptable response to the question of ratification of the Treaty of Nice, but we do not hold that view. A referendum or plebiscite which purported to make lawful the infringement of our common law rights would itself be unlawful. We come back to the oath of allegiance. Magna Carta says we will appoint justices, constables, sheriffs or other officials, only men that know the law of the realm and are minded to keep it well. How can such officers of the Crown organise such a referendum or plebiscite? These procedures would also infringe Articles 1, 2 and 4 of the Bill of Rights. Number one, that the pretended power of suspending of laws or the execution of laws by regal authority without consent of Parliament is illegal. This must include the Coronation Oath Act. Two, that the pretended power of dispensing with laws or the execution of laws by regal authority, as it has been assumed and exercised of late, is illegal. Four, that levying money for or to the use of the Crown by pretense of prerogative without grant of Parliament for longer time or in other manner than the same is, shall be, uh, same is or shall be granted is illegal. This is further protection for our common law rights. Do I understand that? <laughs> or for any day. Yeah, that levying money for or to the use of the Crown by pretense of prerogative without grant of Parliament for longer time or in other manner than the same is or shall be granted is illegal. In the event that the Treaty of Nice is considered for royal assent, we respectfully request that Her Majesty grant us an opportunity to examine the opinion of those who seek to alter our constitution by contrary advice. Accordingly, under those same terms of Magna Carta and the Bill of Rights quoted earlier, we, the undersigned and others, have formed a Barons Constitutional Committee to be available for consultation and to monitor the present situation as it develops until redress has been obtained. We are and remain Her Majesty's most loyal and obedient subjects, Ashbourne, Rutland, Masserine and Ferrard Hamilton of Dalzill. It's quite long, isn't it? It's very long. I know that these people disbanded slightly. They invoked the law, but they did actually say anyone can stand under it, anyone can swear oath to it, and they're happy for anyone to continue their work. Um, since they invoked it, that makes it you know, law, a lawful instrument in the paperwork and things like that. Uh, we know because we've, we've done it. Uh, the reply 
I am commanded by the Queen to reply to your letter of 23rd March and accompanying petition to Her Majesty about the Treaty of Nice. The Queen continues to give this issue her closest attention. She is well aware of the strength of feeling which European treaties such as the Treaty of Nice cause. As a constitutional sovereign, Her Majesty is advised by her government who support this treaty. Traitors. Uh, as I, I'm sure you know, the Treaty of Nice cannot enter force until it has been ratified by all member states and in the United Kingdom this entails the necessary legislation being passed by Parliament. So that's really hard to read, but I did it. Well done. Cheers. There's more, there's lots more of these things and um, I do uh, audio clips as well, which I can do again later if it's too confusing. What should we do now then? Go down to the orchard. Yep, let's do it.